Hello, this is Clayton with Aeromotive Research and Development Group. Today we're going to be sharing with you a very important presentation, which is about engine performance measurements that are very simple to use to determine your engine and coolant system efficiency within the racing, automotive, and commercial coolant system. Now the purpose of this presentation is so that you can be able to provide real-time, on-track, simple and basic points of coolant system measurement so that you can verify true performance of the overall cooling system instead of just singling out and blaming everything. Hey, it's the radiator. Well, it could be something else. This information is needed in order to determine the coolant system performance, the radiator performance, and the uh, engine uh, cooling system. Is there blockages in there? Is there an engineering problem? Now, this pr specific presentation, and I know it could be opposite or whatever, but in this specific presentation, we're going to be stating that the hot is coming in on the top and the cold is exiting on the bottom. Now some specific performance ac applications might do the reverse but for this presentation if yours is opposite I'm sorry but this is what we're doing on this one. Now we have to remember to measure the points for engine and coolant system heat transfer performance we have to remember that uh, is through the convection of heat. You see it's the transfer of heat energy, BTUs, British thermal units, within a fluid by the actual movement of the transference of the heated molecules from one place hot to another cool. Then the cool convection process is the opposite. All right, It's the reverse. Within a fluid by actual movement for the transfer of, of molecules from cool to the other hot. We'll get into this little detail later. Now, the key is to use distilled water with a specific formulated chemistry in the coolant system designed to conduct the duties with performance repeatability. Now, you have to remember, a considerable amount of available heat energy, BTU, British Thermal Heat Energy, must be relieved from the metal combustion chamber components by the heat transfer convection process. This heat transfer convection process is performed by the coolant system dispersing the heat energy into the atmosphere through the radiator or heat exchanger. Now, under the points of coolant system measurement, it's very simple and easy to do. You just use a laser heat gun, you know what I'm saying, just point and go uh, directly at the point of measurement. Now, the optimum way is to use a controlled atmospheric chamber costing thousands of dollars per hour. Go call Roush Powertrain or somebody else, and uh, uh, they'll charge you $2,000 an hour in today's money to get the same thing done. But you see, these simple methods is a little less precise, but accurate, and will provide a solid general direction for all that is working. Now, you first have to have a baseline. You've got to know your vehicle. Try to repeat the test at least three times while the engine is running. Try to create the same settings, such as an outside temperature. In other words, always do it at the same temperature all the time. Now the best outside temperature to use is 85 degrees. Why is that? This is when the coolant system achieves nucleate boil and the oxygen and the uh, humidity is just right there, 85 or above. You don't need to go to 120, you could, but 85 is a good one. Here's when you perform your uh, coolant system measurements. You see when you come off the track or drive off the street or whatever you're doing, you can do this in your regular uh, classic hot rod car or Indy car, I don't care what you got. But in other words, you come in off, uh, you got to perform these temperature readings before it just stops and then heat soak temps increase. All right, and uh, and the test needs to be repeatable so that you can have a baseline and then compare. You see, if the vehicle doesn't have a fan system, either electric or direct pulley, consider to place a floor fan in front of the radiator. What's a floor fan? Well, that's the fan that you use to dry your floor after you've washed it. You know. Now, with in the, into the nose opening to make sure that the uh, air can flow through the radiator when the engine is running at idle so it doesn't overcook itself. Take the data information to create your own average and final determination. All right, now here's one thing on the thermostat. For exact repeatability study, you need to pin open the thermostat into a full position. You see, the slightest variable of movement, even an eighth of an inch under certain conditions, could affect the performance of between 10 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, for the points of a coolant system measurement, temperature measurement is more than just the single gauge, which your temperature gauge, which is usually the probe coming off the cylinder head of the block. You've got multiple measurement points. In other words, the thermostat area. Make sure the motor is at uh, operational temperature. You know, it's fully open. The cylinder head, which is usually where your uh, gauge probe is at. All right, 
and normally on about a 500 horsepower motor it's going to be about 10 to 20 degrees hotter than the thermostat because we have to remember with higher horsepower etc the more BTUs or heat energy that it's moving so that's why the cylinder head is going to be hotter than what's coming in now on the radiator you've got the inlet where the hot water is coming in the outlet where the cool water is coming out and this also works for the inlet and the outlet on the oil cooler as well which we'll get into later now on the water coolant system measurement points we have the inlet on the upper part of the radiator the outlet where the it's on the bottom coming out from the radiator the thermostat housing and then the engine cylinder head and the block if you have an oil cooler uh, there's two points that we can remember if you have an oil cooler inside the radiator you've got the inlet and the outlet if you actually have an oil radiator itself you have an inlet and an outlet now why are all these these points so important you have to make sure that there's no blockage everything is clean so you can be able to have heat transfer efficiency which we'll talk about a little more in a minute now the key is to discover if the radiator and the coolant system chemistry is working at premium efficiency which is the difference between the inlet and the outlet in other words water is cooled as, as air passes over the cooling tubes temperature difference between the inlet and the outlet in engineering terms is called delta T delta means difference T means temperature in other words the inlet where it's hot coming in and the outlet where it's cool going out now the premium what we've discovered delta T difference using a qualified water coolant system treatment or racing cooling or coolant system product is close to the 40 degree mark which we'll get into in a minute now as mentioned you want to have a delta T difference in temperature okay the difference between the inlet and the outlet what you want to try to achieve is about 37 to 42 or close to the 40 degree mark if you don't have a 40 degree mark then you are not at the complete efficiency of what is going on we'll explain that coming up now if we had a radiator like we did in a performance repeatability test in uh, uh, the Dearborn and Detroit area at 120 degrees you can have the water cooler chemistry that will have the ability for a temperature difference from the inlet to the outlet with, to the radiator with sufficient air coming through of up to 40 degrees difference now as we see here it's like the hot coming in or the or the cold uh, coming out with sufficient airflow coming through now the same performance difference I don't know on the oil but you will notice the oil uh, cooler to see if it's being efficient now in greater detail you can read it on the right but what we're looking at is that the water cooler at a hundred and um, twenty degree operational temperature all right had an inlet temperature of hundred and sixty three degrees and an outlet temperature of hundred and thirty degrees with an average inlet outlet temperature difference of between thirty four to a little over 40 degrees uh, close to that all right now when the chemistry is not working as well such as a regular glycol coolant okay this just happens to say prestone could be anybody they're all pretty close to the same whether it's ethylene regular glycol etc please don't get me on that but I'm just saying for the sake of the determination of what we have here is that the delta D difference with a glycol chemistry was only 15 degrees it, now you might say Clayton well what is it with your uh, other uh, coolant water chemistries that is not water cooler well those are usually 20 to 25 so we have found about a 15 percent difference at the radiator with the water cooler chemistry you can try it the chemistry and do the test yourself and find out now something else that is very important is to make sure that the airflow and you have clean cooling tubes and water chemistry being efficient on the heat transfer you see the cooling tubes need to be clean from the coating contaminations on the inside of the radiator rust corrosion calcium uh, etc in other words the water chemistry needs to be clean have a clean surface to transfer the heat from the water directly through the metal to the air passing by the cooling fins need to be clean from dirt and contamination for airflow all right gotta have air flowing through it all right 
because an advanced water chemistry provides a surface coating and cleaning with spe special heat transfer chemicals to be able to work accordingly. All right. Now, another thing that we have a presentation I don't want to get into with you is, is what's called standing system pressure. If you do not have the inside of the radiator clean, which we're going to show in a little bit, if you do not have that, then what's going to happen is you're going to have the alloy gases coming out and creating a standing system pressure of anywhere from uh, 15 to 30 extra PSI. With this Zenmax water cooler chemistry, etc., it's zero. Now, the reason for the measurement goal, as stated, is to learn the delta T difference to ensure that the radiator is working to efficiency, the chemistry is working to efficiency, uh, performing as it's done. Now, the reason the measurements on the engine is to make sure the thermostat's open if you have one. The water chemistry is protecting and pulling heat from the hot spots of the components, such as the cylinder head, the piston, uh, cylinder wall, etc. Why? Because under extreme and long endurance conditions, the advanced water chemistry will maintain thermal system performance repeatability. Now, what is it like when you have a, uh, a distilled water in a treatment? Well, here we've got a radiator that uh, was used and uh, with the Synmax water cooler treatment. You can see how clean this was after 2,000 racing miles. Here's the short track car that was used here. And what it was is that it had over 2,000 racing miles on this. All right. We had a, a steel block, which could have created rust, but it didn't. It was protected. We had aluminum radiator, which had no uh, corrosion inhibition, uh, corrosion that took place within it. So the block in the engine was as clean as the passages of the radiator. That is important to know. You might say, why did you get this radiator? Well, the only thing that's going to kill this radiator is 90 miles and 100 miles an hour on a concrete wall. <laughs> And uh, uh, this got donated at the end of an accident from the championship race. Now, what we want to be able to do is use it starting at the engine in the dyno, through the technical procedures, all the way through to the racing to provide coolant system cleanliness and performance repeatability. You see, a radiator here was provided by an IndyCar racing team, which was under technical directive, and what they found and they donated this to us, is after 5,000 racing miles, the tubes were clean, the uh, radiator was clean on the inside, and it was consistent with everything that took place into this. This is the performance repeatability of cleansing that you need, and here is 5,000 racing miles at, uh, with a $9,000 radiator uh, with coolant system on an engine that was 700 horsepower at 12,000 RPMs. Amazing performance. Now, the coolant system treatment that we're talking about that works well to allow the measurements to work well is going to be the Synmax uh, water cooler treatment. Okay? Now, you can read on here. It has no glycol chemistry, and uh, uh, it's able to um, uh, provide overall coolant system efficiency, heat transfer, conviction capability. It'll help with the nucleate boil and form performance, uh, reduce the foaming and cavitations. Reduce cylinder head and combustion chamber and overhead temperatures and, and the contaminants of the coolant system. It'll be able to protect against the, the rust in the steel and the corrosion in the aluminum. Protect against electrolysis, provide pH balance and acidic control. Further lubricating the water pump bearings and surface friction reduction and conditioning the seals, rubber hoses, and components. Now, the water cooler chemistry is usually used with technical grade distilled water. If you want everything in a complete 100% product, what you need to use is the Synmax water cooler premix. Now, it is not an antifreeze. It's a racing coolant product. One gallon, simple, easy to use, guarantee quality each time, provides an FIA 5% treat rate with the 95% pure distilled water. So, Clint, why, why is that so important? Well, this 5% FIA treat rate, which is determine the FIA is the governing body for the entire world based there in Europe and it's going to be used for the Le Mans, Formula One, all the other different racing series in Europe and England and usually that 5% is what is required and is acceptable within NASCAR, ARCA, IndyCar, SCCA, etc. Now, who uses the water cooler product? Well, I'm glad that you asked. Well, you see here we've got a IndyCar manufacturer 
They provided a specific technical directive for the use of the Synmix water cooler, or they could use the premix if they wanted. All right. And this was used in the in the engine build, the dyno sessions, technical, and it created, and the final results on this was over um, five IndyCar manufacturers championships up to the point of this presentation, which is in 2012, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Amazing performance. Now, if you're looking for an antifreeze product, which has the same performance characteristics as the water cooler, please check out the automotive coolant, the extreme duty formulation. This was able this was also under technical directive by the IndyCar engine manufacturer. So that was used during dyno sessions and winter testing when it got below freezing and has provided tremendous reliability over the last uh, five years in multiple championships. Now, the Aeromotive Coolant Extreme Duty Formulation is able to have over 300 uh, degrees of anti-boil unpressurized capability, antifreeze down to negative 90 below, has a long life of 50,000 hours or, you know, about a half a million automotive or commercial operations, doesn't contain any petroleum glycols, and has all the performance characteristics of the racing product, which was the uh, Senmax water cooler product. This product is really designed, uh, developed in racing, on uh, the coolant product for uh, military, marine, commercial automotive, your own gasoline or diesel vehicle for extreme duty long life applications. So we want to thank you for being with us during the simple engine and coolant system performance measurements. This is very important to know. As Wayne Lunzing says, Racing radiator cleanliness and coolant system performance equals championship results. So on behalf of Wayne Lensing, Danny Lensing, Performance Parts Supply, Left-Hander Chassis Group, including Synmax Performance Lubricants, we want to thank you for spending the time with us today. Should you desire some of the Synmax water cooler, uh, please contact us in the Chicagoland area at 815-389-9999. Check us out on web on www.synmaxoil.com. And if you have any technical questions, send us an email here at office at aeromotiveresearch.com. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you at the next presentation.